Yeah, I think radiocarbon dating has got to be one of the most misunderstood tools around, which is interesting because it's founded on really good physics principles and there's lots of Christians who are engaged in doing radiocarbon dating. And what I find is that they use the technique to date lots of biblical events and artifacts. So I find it kind of interesting that there's this skepticism of it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it is interesting because I think even many Christians that are skeptical about carbon-14 dating don't realize that it is used to date so many important biblical artifacts that we talk about as being part of the uh, proving of the Bible as being historically accurate. Yeah, I know one of them is Hezekiah's Tunnel uh, that they can do. Uh, are there any others that you're aware of off well, the top of your head? Yeah, one of the most important, obviously, is the Dead Sea Scrolls that oh, no. as being uh, such an ancient document, um, many of the books of the Old Testament, that is the most ancient version we have is in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But using carbon-14 dating as a way of placing them in, in about right prior to the first century before the time of Jesus is an amazing, many have said, the discovery of the century. Right. You know, and what I find remarkable, too, is that when you take the dating of the Dead Sea Scrolls, Hezekiah's Tunnel, other things where we can put some sort of chronology with the Bible. Um, you take radiocarbon dates, you look at tree rings and vars that are laid down in lakes. You find this remarkably consistent picture um, you know, that goes back, it's like they, they just correlate incredibly well. And you go, you take that back to five, 10,000 years ago, and, and it extends back to 20, 30, 40,000 years ago. And I think that's where the skepticism comes in, or, or the, the hesitation is because now you're getting dates longer than the six to 10,000 years, and that kind of upsets some Christians, I think. Yeah, but you make an important point there. I want to make sure we restate that, that we have multiple independent lines of evidence mm -hmm. that all kind of converge in the same direction. It's not just radiocarbon dating. There are other things that can come right. in, and these, these sometimes even record natural disasters that we know the dates of right, in history. Right, like Vesuvius and Pompeii. And, exactly. Yeah, so. so we have ways to kind of calibrate those things. And these are, I think, commonly misunderstood among lay people is the fact of how well these things are tested by scientists and right. well understood in how the process works. Well, it seems to give us just a real good tool to measure how the universe operates, and that as far as I understand, flows out of biblical principles. Yeah, well, me being the theologian, we'll put that hat on for a second. And I think that that's a great point because that's a, a point of convergence between the Christian worldview and the scientific method. You know, one of the most foundational principles of doing science is that we live in a world that is measurable, it's testable, it's something we can study, has repeatable results, but that rests on the the assumption that the world is a consistent place that we can look at the laws of nature and that they act consistently well one of the ways that we can measure and test the world is through radiocarbon dating it's yeah. a wonderful tool i think it's a great word you used right in your, in your opening there is it's a tool that god has given us to measure study and discover the world it's pretty exciting stuff